Another edition of the Let's Go Ricky Roll podcast, Bethel Duran, Ricky Romero, Josh Tolley, fresh from his tractor, uh, Ricky's dealing with the baby, there's all kinds of stuff going on people, thanks for always joining us on the podcast, and we told you last week, we had a special guest, they didn't want to say who, and we are we finally got him, five time all-star, two time gold glover, first rounder, uh, goes way back with both these guys, Troy Tulowitzki joins us right now from the University of Texas where he's an assistant coach for the Longhorns. And I, I, this is going to be fun, right, Rick? As you were telling me, you're like, Tula wants in, but he doesn't quite know what the podcast is. And I know, I, Tula, Tula, I told you, we're not going to talk about anything baseball-related. We don't care. It's the Tula show, and you and Ricky and Tolly, and let's just go back and talk some chop, some shop there. Sounds yeah, man. Good. Like I said earlier, I'm, these guys are great. I'm glad Tulo's joining us. I've been wanting to – I've asked him a few times, and obviously the times weren't right, but he finally had some time today. So I'm glad he's joining us. We go way back, man. We go b- way back to 03, I think, when we uh, played against each other. He was at Long Beach State. I was at Fullerton. And first time I saw him play, I was like, man, this kid is a stud. I gave up a bomb to him. I'll never forget at <laughs> Florida Field uh, on a Sunday game, I believe. It was a day game. And – Ever since then, I was like, man, like we, I just knew he was a stud, man. And and we kind of watched each other grow during those college years because we played so much against each other. And then in 04, we roomed together for Team USA. Um, and it was some of the funnest times ever, man. Like, honestly, Tulo is one of the toughest competitors I've ever met. I still, I'll never forget when we were on the plane on our way to Taiwan to play for the, for the gold medal. They asked him, they're like, hey, what are you looking forward to? He's like, I'm not coming home unless we win a gold medal. Like, <laughs> just like that, you know, and he was that serious. He was always intense, man. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm pumped that he's, he's joining us today because, uh, you know, I consider him a, a great player, somebody that I looked up to when, when he was playing. We got to face each other in the big leagues, too, which was really, really cool. He kind of made me look bad a little bit because <laughs> – the Blue Jays skipped him, took me, took the Rockies to the World Series, and shit, man, I didn't hear the end of that. So, but luckily he came back to Toronto and he guided us to the playoffs. So, that was good. <laughs> no, I appreciate those kind of words, Ricky. Um, you know, my, I, I think the world of you, man. I always, always have from afar. Like it was just like you said, uh, I saw a competitor and Ricky, someone that you know made his team better. And then when we got a chance to play with each other on the USA team. You know, all those things sometimes that you see from the other side, then you get a chance to play with someone and you see a different side. With Ricky, I saw the same guy, super competitive, great teammate. Um, You wanted him on the mound. Um, You knew when the going got tough that you're going to get Ricky's best and then watching him in the big leagues, you know. Um, I know we joke around that he got picked before me, but he had a heck of a career. Um, Used to always pay attention to what he was doing. I think just when you're playing at times, you find any little thing that you possibly – can do to to make yourself better so i tried to use that as motivation for myself that you know the blue jays took ricky before they you know took me and i think i always gave him a hard time or whenever i had the chance to do that but he earned that um but at the same time i think as a as a big league player as someone that you're trying to be the best you're always trying to find those little things to to make yourself go so that was one for me but i always had the utmost respect for ricky and then totally on the other hand the exact opposite. <laughs> Horseshit baseball player, good guy. Yeah, basically all that. Just hey, I, I, one I of the worst big leaguers I've ever played with was. <laughs> just hey, absolutely that's terrible. That's a lot of a knuckleball, though, too low. <laughs> yeah, he had to find a gimmick over there. You know, Ari Dickey, you know, put him in his bat bag and took him for a long ride in the big league. So he earned it a little bit. You know, he got some big league time. I'm proud of him, but. Um, you talk about one of the best teammates ever. That's totally right there, man. I still tell people a lot. He was Thanks, one of my favorite guys in the dugout, on the bus, everything. And, you know, both of you guys are great friends. Thank you. I, um, I, that, those, as, as a, as a player, it, we joke around about me being a horseshit player, but like, yeah, it probably, when, when you saw me, I was really horseshit, right? But, uh, <laughs> I always say, I, I always say the, the listen, the, the thing that when you leave, the game, nobody remembers that you went four for four, right? It, it's always the bark that you leave on your teammates. And and, and I was brought up by some good guys uh, that had brought me into this game. 
and you continued, you were a chip off of that block. And when you came over to Toronto to it, when we met, uh, I mean, I, it'll be a day I never forget. And I echo the same thing to everybody. It, it is, that was a special team, a special group. And uh, it, it was fun. It, it was a blast. Jesus, stories for days. I, I love <laughs> yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. To, when go ahead, I went go. over there, you know, one of the things that I, uh, unfortunately, Ricky, you know, and I watched some of the uh, podcasts with Joey Bats there, and, you know, I saw Ricky mention that, you know, it's probably tough for him to watch us play and have all that success because he was there and a big part of it. And then, unfortunately, had some injuries and, you know, went, went a different way. But, uh, man, Ricky, I tell you what, uh, I wish you would have, you know, been able to experience that that team because I know you've had it before, you know, in college and on the USA team, but we had that it factor. We had, you know, that part of coming to the ballpark every day, competing our ass off. No one was safe in that locker room, and it was a fun ride. Um, and I think that goes to, to, you know, for people listening out there, it goes to show you that, you know, it isn't always about talent. It's about that the right group coming together and knowing when they take the field as a team that special things can happen. And that's kind of, you know, what Tolly is echoing, that we have that there. And I'd like to think that, you know, Tolly played a huge part in that. And he didn't. He wasn't even on the field, but he was, you know, an important piece to us winning games. And then, you know, when I came over there, everybody knows how serious I am in a locker room. Um, but I think I brought maybe uh, professionalism and an intense – um, you know, day in, day out work attitude. And I think it was the perfect storm. We really had a little bit of everything. You know, it, it's funny you bring that up because it really did. It killed me because one, I knew I, I, I've known you for a long time, Tulo. And I was like, God, Lee, what I would give to be part of that team with Tulo on the team. And we know each other so well, it would have just been sweet, you know, and, and, we had some tough times when I was coming up with the Jays and, and, you know, being in third place, fourth place, year in and year out. And then um, Alex goes and make those, makes those moves. It was, it, it was tough, but at the same time, like I said, it was, I was happy, you know, and, and everyone talks about how, how sweet the stadium is when it was, when it was full in, in Toronto, how loud it was. You guys were rock stars, man. And it was, it was, it was it, part of me, like I said, it was dope to see on TV, you know, the, the, the stadium super packed and, just the intensity and and it, it, I could tell that once they traded for Tulo, though, it was like it, it was going to bring a different dynamic into that team. I mean, he he'd been to a World Series before; he knew what it takes to to win, and they came so close, man. You know, and uh, and but it was it was definitely a fun ride. I, all I hear, I mean, we we heard it from Bautista too. You know how how sweet it was during that time. He went through some tough times, so he I was happy for like him, for Edwin, for those guys that 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 had been there through the tough times and then got to experience that it was it was, it was pretty dope you you know what you know what stands out though too more than anything and i tell people this all the time it was the it was accountability that was something you did so well in that clubhouse was hold dudes accountable it didn't matter if they were the 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 number one two three or four or number 25 26 whatever it was everybody was accountable and and hats off because you, you were you were the piece to that i i mean I, I, I say it now, and I've said it before. It's um, it, you made the thing tick, man, and I, I just I it gives me goosebumps because uh, I, I that's the part that I miss right now, not playing. Appreciate that. You know, I think it's just came to the ballpark every day, ready to play. Um, you know, I, I, I tried to hold myself accountable first, and when you hold yourself accountable and you show up day in day out, put in the work, I think it makes it a lot easier to do the same with your teammates. Um, and that brings me to what I do now in the coaching world and, you know, doing the same thing. I mean, just because I'm a big leaguer and I have a, ba a baseball card with, you know, some nice numbers on the back, if you don't get to work with these kids, you know, they won't listen. Um, I think people have always said that. Sometimes good players don't make great coaches. So even today, to this day, I promise you, you know, I show up to the yard early, stay late, and try to put in put in the work. Uh, that's, that's key. So, like – I don't know you. I've been in the clubhouse with you when you guys would play the Dodgers and being that, uh, as a reporter for ESPN Radio. But I always heard of you and getting to know Ricky and Cesar Ramos over the years uh, who played at Long Beach with you and hearing those stories. It was always great guy, super intense. Like yeah, Even yeah. right now on the podcast, you're talking shit to Tony so good and you're still like really intense. Okay, finally we, get, finally we get him to smile. Where does that intensity come from? Uh, great question. Um, I think it's, it's always helped me on the ball field. I always realized that it was a strength for me. Yeah. Um, 
I wouldn't consider myself always the most talented. I know some people might go, well, come on, you're crazy. But I think, <laughs> really? you know, when I stepped out on the field and between the lines, I was literally trying to kick your ass. And, and <laughs> you know, and I had to do it in a, like I, like I tell our guys, you know, some guys are fun and, you know, have a smile on their face. That's how they kick your ass. And some people are intense. And that I was always, I played better intense. And then, you know, people brought that to my attention. And now, unless my good friends know me and they'll tell you, you know, yeah, he's a clown at times. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, you know, I try to stay locked in and, and, and serious because really that's who I am at heart. Now, were you like that as a kid too? Yeah. <laughs> you driven, were the- <laughs> very, very driven from the get-go, you know, locked in. I mean, I was on a mission from as as small as I can remember to absolutely dominate in anything I did. Now, it wasn't always in baseball. It could have been in different sports. I think my dad being a coach and always being on my ass probably, you know, played a part in that. Yeah. But, man, that's how I always was, super competitive. And, you know, that's something that, Ricky, I've talked to you about this, uh, about different players, same with Tolly. And the guys we get on here, everybody has a different path. That's why when we talked about parents, like, oh, my kid's the best nine-year-old in the world. Like, relax. Let the kid be a kid right now. And you're dealing that when you're recruiting. But did you guys know this about uh, Tulo? He went 15-1 and as a pitcher in high school. He was, uh, yeah, the one loss I know he's probably still pissed off about. He was a two-year varsity stud basketball player. He was like the Mr. Everything in Sunnyvale in Northern California, state player of the team and all that other stuff. Like, but there's a lot of kids, Tulo, that have those accolades and then they get to college and it's like, oh, they like shiver, they cower. It's like, I used to be the best guy. It seemed, because I watched you play at Long Beach on Friday nights, it was like, this guy, you could just tell had a different persona, right, Rick? Like, this is that guy where no matter how good he is, baseball card numbers or anything like that, he works more than anybody else. Dude, I, I saw it. I'm telling you, I saw it from the first time we played against Long Beach State, and he was starting as a as a freshman, and and we had a couple freshmen uh, starting on that uh, on the Fullerton team, which is pretty cool. So you saw a lot of young kids. We had Turner started starting at second base, and then you had uh, Danny Dorn and the Alpha, who were true freshmen, and then you had Tulo on the other side starting too. And it was like, like I said, when when you saw him, it was it was different, man. It was the, the way he carried himself, his walk, his his strut. It was just it was different, and 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 I just know Tulo carried uh, a big chip on his shoulder because it's not like he was. I don't think he were you highly recruited, Tulo. I, I think I remember. No, I saying, actually I hate to say this, and I think I've told you before. I let Hookie know all the time about this. I, know. I, I, I didn't know you were going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I wanted to go to Fullerton and. Uh, you know, Neil Walton was the, the big shortstop recruit. So um, another another thing that just ate at me. So I ended up going to Long Beach, got an opportunity there. But anytime I played Fullerton, you know, I, I wanted to let them know that they made a mistake. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll let you know. I mean, we, we, were, we were rooming together for, for the USA team. And he told me, he's like, and he, he like literally told me, we, we were still we had gotten to know each other but i think we became even closer during that tournament because we literally one night we stayed up we were so jet like and we were bumping music at like one two o'clock in the morning just talking sit like chilling like i think we we grew closer that day and and i remember hey he's like dude i you know i wanted to go to fullerton and they told me they had uh neil walton and that they didn't have a spot for me and ever since then it was like i want to kill fullerton and <laughs> and it hey. came out hard man Hey, Ricky, you weren't bumping music at 1 o'clock talking baseball because you were jet lagged. That's what Tulo does. Huh? So many <laughs> times, man. So many times sitting in the clubhouse till two hours after the game just talking about the game. That's what I love. I'm going to hijack this for a second because uh, there's something, Beto, that, that, that stood out. And you talk about a chip on your shoulder and all of that. Uh, work ethic, right? Like this is – I've been doing a few lessons with some kids and – and work ethic is something that I preach. And Tulo, back me up on this. I'll never forget Devin Travis was having some, some troubles around second base, uh, turning double plays. And, and Tulo would be out there with an early work with Devin Travis, helping him get better. And that's like, that's something that I don't think enough big leaguers do anymore. Everybody comes in, checks the box, worries about themselves, all of that. And that's knowledge, right? Devin Travis didn't know what he knew and really until he talked to to guys like Tulo, and that's why when you when I uh, when I spoke with you and you said you were going to Texas, I thought, I mean, what a perfect fit because those kids are going to look up to you, they're going to listen to you, 
And all the knowledge you have, I mean, Jesus, I don't think they realize how good they have it, to be quite honest. Uh, I think you're right with that, but, you know, I, I understand that. They're still young. They're in college. Um, some of them are mature, but then you deal with the immature as well. But, you know, when it's all said and done, I think my goal is for them to to come back one day and say, you never, you know, I didn't realize at the time, but you taught me so much. And, and hopefully it's just not about baseball. I think I try to keep perspective here. And if they can come back and say you made me a better uh, person than – you know, that, that's the goal. But at the same time, you know, you guys know I want to win as bad as anybody. So when, we're, when we step out on the lines, you know, we're trying to, to win the game, um, to play the game the right way and, and respect the game at the same time. Damn, that's the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, no. It, and we were, I was telling that story, and I still remember um, when we were talking to our, our, our Fullerton and uh, Long Beach days. I mean, they're those. Both those programs at that time were stacked, man, were completely stacked. And they had an unbelievable pitching staff led by uh, Jared Weaver. And then, you know, they had Jason Vargas and, and Cesar Ramos. It, it was funny because every time we, we'd, uh, we'd get to Super Regionals, we were always in separate uh, brackets, so we wouldn't have to face uh, each other, I think, one year. And we, we were, I was literally hoping that they would make it to the, to the World Series because I always wanted to see them at that stage. Because they, I, you know, I felt like they never really got a lot of love from the rest of the country, and I was like, man, you guys don't know about Long Beach. And then, you know, you will never forget. Obviously, when Arizona came in to to, to Bear Field, right? I mean, it was it was that was tough. I remember us watching. And we're like, fuck, like we 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 literally wanted Long Beach State to make it to the College World Series. It was just obviously made the Big West a lot better, and we hated that the SEC schools always got the love and stuff like that. And we felt we always felt respected in that way, but. I'll never forget uh, <laughs> when we faced each other, Beto. I remember, uh, I think, Tula, what year did you break your hammock, Bone? Yeah, I think it was draft year. I think so, both of us. So it must have been, what, 05, right? Five, five. Yeah. And we were faced, and he came back, dude, to against us. He came back against us, and I was a Friday night guy, and he hit a double off me. Bro, I still fucking hear his voice in my ear. He was like, like, it was loud. We would pack the stadium at Goodwin Field. And this guy was like, let's go. And he's looking at me. He's like, let's go. Keep bringing that shit. Let's go. And just yelling, dude. And I was like, and I'm motherfucking. I'm like, fuck you. Like that. Like, we're just going back and forth. And he's like, no, F you. No, F you. And we're like, oh, dude, it was like so, like, honestly, I keep thinking about those moments because it was some of the funnest moments in my career. You know, obviously the big leagues is cool and all that, but. Those college years, Tulo. I mean, you have to admit, man, those those were some cool freaking games we used to play. Why, why, why do you think that's? I'm here, you know. Um, <laughs> I love the college game. Those are some of the best years of my life, you know. And um, to get a chance to even share those stories with with uh, the kids here at Texas is just. I don't know if they believe them sometime, um, but <laughs> those were the funnest years of my life, you know. I I I didn't even want to honestly. I was a first rounder, and I didn't even want to leave. I wanted to stay at Long Beach because we got cut short there and lost in that last game of a super. And I wanted to come back and say, no, I, I'm not leaving unless I earn this and we get to Omaha. Um, you know, I think that was right after the game. I remember thinking that I took another week or two and said, you know what, you know, talk to my teammates and they said, dude, you have no choice. You got to go. And uh, it's the right thing to do. But I remember my initial was I need to come back because we have, you know, something we need to finish. But when you talk about, you know, those college years, those are the guys you absolutely, you know, you grow up with them. Um, and that's what you're saying. We both made it to the big leagues, but we talked about our college years because, you know, it was that enjoyable for us. But, yeah, competing against you, I think for me it was a little extra there because I came back early and I was <laughs> still hurting. And I felt like the only thing I can do uh, because I couldn't stay through a baseball at the time is I remember going up there and saying and taking BP the same way, saying I need to hook a double down the line because I can't <laughs> stay through a baseball right now. So I got one way to get a hit. So I think when, you know, you hear the whole story and then you accomplish that and you work for it and you got the pitch to do it on, um, you know, you, you get you get those juices flowing a little bit more. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, hold on. Let, me take, take, let, me, let me clear something up here. To, look, you were oh, six pick overall and you felt seven, like you... Seven, oh, seven, seven, Ricky seven. Was, oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Seventh, you know, you're, you're a millionaire already to go. And you're like, forget all that. 
I got to do something that I that I set out to accomplish, and I came up short. Like Rick, like t- totally, that attitude is nuts. Because most guys are like, most guys are like, dude, forget you. I'm gone. Like I don't even know who you guys are anymore. <laughs> Damn, that's the mentality. That's a big league mentality. That's gone. That's right. It's not. It's not done until it's done. I, I remember flying back. Uh, Two of what was that? Maybe Kansas City when we got beat, right? Would that have been Kansas City? Same thing. Yep. I mean, it was like it was early in the morning the next day, and and this guy's pissed. He's like, we didn't accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. Like it's a failed season, and, and that's that's the mindset, man. And that's that it, it's gone. It, it's but that's that's who he is. That's that, awesome. that, that story yeah, I think you're wrong. During that run, I thought we had, you know, a team to win the World Series. I honestly did. I thought we were the best team, you know, in the big league. So you don't get that opportunity too many times. And I sense what we had. And there's no doubt we came up short. And it was a fun ride. But at the same time, I think, you know, I'm always talking about maximizing potential of either an individual or as, or as a team. And, um, you know, that one stung bad because I told the guys in the locker room saying, you guys don't realize how special this is for the young kids that we had teams like this, they don't come along, you know, very often at all. And I remember telling Ryan Goings and some other you guys that, you know, Devin Travis that were a little bit younger, you guys will be, you know, as long as you guys play, and hopefully it's for a long time, you guys will be telling stories about this team because it's usually not like this, you know, telling Stro or whoever it may be. Like, this is not normal what we have here. And I think yeah. if you were to ask those guys today, they would, they would say the same thing, saying, man, that team was special. I don't know what it was, but there was something about that team that was special. And um, I tried to make sure and point it out to those guys because my rookie year, I didn't understand what I had when we made it to the whole series. So I enjoyed that ride a little bit more than my rookie year. And I tr- was trying to do that for the young guys and say, hey, this is special. It doesn't mean you're going to make it here every year. Damn. Yeah. Damn. And, and that's what I, that's what I was going to ask you, Tulo. Who, who, who do you think took you or you know who took you under your wing? Like who who – you obviously passed down that down to the younger guys. Who who told you that when you got to the World Series? Maybe when you guys lost. Who said like, dude, enjoy the the crap out of this because you just never know if you're going to be back here. Or who took you under under their wing? What player? There was a lot of guys in my career that took me under their wing. You know, Todd Helton was a great uh, Matt Holiday. But at the same time, you got to realize when I went to the Rockies, they had never won at all. I think maybe one playoff appearance. So none of them have any had any experience and. Uh, when I went in there, I was rushed into a, a leader role uh, real quick in my career. So I remember going in there and mouthing off as a young kid because I'm, I'm definitely not scared to say um, and voice my opinion. And I was basically, you know, down talking some of the big leaguers saying, dude, what do you guys know about winning around here? You guys don't tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. You know, so they still give me a hard time about that, but they loved every second of it. They talk about that all the time, saying, you know, that was great that you as a young player came in and was like, you guys don't know how to win, so what am I going to listen to you guys for? And um, I think I was just trying to, you know, um, poke the bear a little bit, try to piss them off, saying, who's this guy? I kind of knew what I was doing, but after that, I still needed to learn the game from them, right? Mm -hmm. Todd Helton, Matt Holliday, Brad Hobb, Garrett Atkins. I wasn't ready for the big leagues, um, but I think I was. My work ethic was ready, but I needed to learn from them how to take a quality at bat, um, how to play 162. So there was a lot of give and take there, you know, that I needed to listen. I needed to hang around and and, and eat meals with them and go out with them. And you guys talked about team dinners on this podcast before. All those things helped me, but at the same time, I felt like. I knew what it took to at least have a winning culture because of college. Um, I really think I had a good grip on that early, early on. It, it's funny, Tulo, you bring that up because I, I have this conversation often. So being drafted out of high school, I go right into professional baseball. I said, I don't want to go to college, right into pro ball. I want to get into the system, and that's what I want to do. And, and it, it worked out for me, right? Like I, I had some service time. It's been wonderful. However... If, if my kids, or I have to give advice to any other parent, my advice is go to college. Because I'm telling you, you're right. I had to grow into professional baseball, and that's not a winning dynamic. You 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 check the box. It's not about uh, 
it's what prospects hit and who's playing where um, and, and where you are on their on their list versus when you're in college baseball, you play to win the game every day. And that's what uh, that's something that I feel like I missed four years or three years of my of my life that uh, I, I would love to go back to uh, to almost uh, go take a shot at it right now, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally. You're here. I, I tell my guys that every day. You don't understand yeah. how important these college years are for you, you know. Um, and I really – you can move quick, you know. You can go from college baseball, and if you're a good player, you can get to the big leagues quick. And that's much better, in my opinion, than spending three or four years um, in college instead of, you know, on those long bus rides or just not knowing the game yet because it's a lot to handle. And you can um, – you know, if you don't have good people around you, you can lose it real quick. But at least in college, you have a nice little support system. You have people that can talk you through your struggles. And that way, you're a little better suited for what's going to, you know, come in the minor leagues. Because everybody has trouble. There's adjustments you got to make, whether you're a pitcher or a position player. And college just gives you that, I think, that maturity there for three or four years to know what you're up against. Sometimes those high school kids get thrown into the fire, and it can be a little too early for them. Yeah, and, and you talk about – but you talk about, like, going through your struggles. I, I used to say this. You could hide in the minor leagues, right? You could make a boneheaded play, and you don't have the cameras in front of you. The moment you get to the big leagues, all the cameras are there. In your case, at college level, you can really hide there. You can be struggling, and your swing can be messed up. But you have the resources to sit down and go to dinner and say, damn, Tula, what, what the hell's wrong with my swing? Well, hey, here's what I see. And you can – as a college player, you can nip that in the butt before – anybody puts a label on you and and i think that's that's like the real value in uh in college sports uh college baseball in particular yeah. Tula, yeah. Did, did you come up with that with that same attitude when you came to long beach were you i mean there, there were a good program um when you came in already but did you came come in with like the same like like hey i'm I, i'm here to go to omaha year in and year out like or did did, did you uh did it take you a while to kind of find your way there, or how, how did it go for you there? Yeah, well, you know, coming in, I had I came in once again, here we go, but with that chip on my shoulder because I was lightly recruited, and all I was hearing about is that I couldn't play there, that I should have went to a junior college. So first I, th I felt like I had to earn it and show, you know, show my teammates, hey, this guy's a good player. Uh, he's only going to get better because he brings it every single day. But I was trying to first, you know, win a position, prove my worth on the team, and once that happened, um, which was somewhat early in my freshman um, year, then it was all about, you know, team getting to Omaha, realizing after you see some other teams play, hey, we have something special here and trying to make the most of it. So I think not right away, but shortly after, I definitely, you know, heavily invested myself into the team and, and, and the goal was Omaha. Now, Tulo, we're going to take you back. You, you didn't get to Omaha, but you did go Team USA. You remember this picture? It's a uh, Team USA oh, yeah. in Japan. <laughs> look at that. It's beautiful. You guys celebrating. You look at that right now. Ricky has an amazing mustache, by the way. Uh, but wh where do, what do you think about that picture? First of all, it's one of the best teams probably ever assembled in USA Baseball. I mean, if you look at that picture, me and Ricky talk about it all the time. I mean, almost every single one of those guys made the big leagues. Um, and if they didn't, it was an unfortunate injury. So, what a talented team. But I think we started off real slow on that team and we had to come together and, and I think, you know, talk about, Hey, these are, the, we're the best players in the world here, but they're not going to hand it to us. So I think as we, as we were going along, you can feel the team get a little bit tighter and okay, here we go. We're, we can't just show up to the field and, and we're going to win because we're better than that. And then when it's all said and done and you see in that picture there, you know, us with the, with the flag and the, and some trophies and the gold medal. I mean, I think hard work, uh, a group of guys that are very talented, but realize that you still had to strap it on and go prove yourself. So that that's what, you know, I remember about that team. And, um, man, great memories. Uh, I wish I can go we back had, there just like oh. We had some studs on that team too, man. I mean, from yourself to – to Alex Gordon, Ryan Zimmerman, Mike Pelfrey, Luke Hochaver, I mean Drew Stubbs, you name it, man. It was it was it was stacked. And and I think we're what, what Tula's talking about is we went to Japan. I rem I'll never forget this. We went to Japan for an exhibition series and uh and we got our asses handed to us by the Japanese team, like absolutely destroyed. And I think that's what Tula's talking about. We we 
we came in thinking we were, you know, hot shit. We had the best players in the country. <laughs> we go there and everyone was looking at each other like, what is going on? And I remember we flew back from Japan to uh, to uh, into LAX and we had a, a, a lunch with Tommy Lasorda. And I remember Tulo when he he absolutely laid into us <laughs> at LMU. Yeah, that was great. I loved every second of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tommy the school just let it eat, you know, talking about yeah, wearing the USA like, across the chest and the whole the whole deal. It was great. Yeah, he he let he laid into us saying, "You guys are a disgrace if you guys are losing to to, <laughs> to man and you know like you guys have need more pride and." This, Bad, and we're kind of sitting there. We're college kids. We're like, oh shit! Like we better get it together because we have this big tournament coming up uh, in Taiwan that we have to get ready for. And we ended up facing that Japanese team in the finals, and we beat them. But it was a, it was the sickest game ever, too. I mean, Luke Hochaver dealt, and it was, dude. It was honestly, it was great baseball. Once we got to that tournament, it's like we locked it in. It was like it was game over. Nobody stood a chance once we got on that field. The, that the Tommy Lasorda like motivational speech, I've heard that one he gave for uh, Team USA of the 2000 Olympics when they were in Sydney, and that guy was like said, "Oh my God, it's a great speech." But I guess it was the same standard speech that he gave to all like Olympian teams. Like he would give it to like the track guys, the wrestling. It's you against the world. Like kind of, is that kind of speech? Is that what he was giving it? Like you're yeah. 21, yeah. And, and Troy, you said you loved every minute of it, right? You were like, that fired you up even more. Yeah, Tommy, you know, that's my that's my type of guy right there, you know, in your face, he lets you know. So yeah, he was he was uh, speaking my language there. Oh, hey, 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 do yourself a favor if you haven't seen it already, go to the YouTube and type in Tommy Lasorda, Kurt Babakwa. Oh and yeah. He goes off. Oh, that's my favorite. I listen to that. Any any time any time I have the ass about something, I just go listen to Tommy uh, giving rants to the media. And it's yeah. my favorite. But- Honestly, you know why I think it, it, it probably hit like a guy like Tulo and I so well? Because we, I think we came from that type of college program, too, where it was like laid into our heads. Like, we don't back down and we're going to go out there and kick your ass. I don't care. Like, Long Beach, Fullerton, you know, Beto, it's blue yeah. collar type players. They're going to they're going to recruit. They're not they're not getting the high, high five star recruits here and there. I mean, our team, our, uh, our, our national championship team was made up of like Kurt Suzuki, who was a walk on PJ Pilateri, who was a walk on. Turner, who was a not even high recruited, Dorn, who wasn't recruited, that myself. I, I was, I was like, it was, it's the same type of everything mirrors itself when it comes to Fullerton and, and Long Beach during that time, and I think that's why like some guys could be like, oh my god, like he's like he's he's we don't know how to react to what Tommy's saying, but I think it came from that type of program where it was like, okay, we know what we got to do, and we got to go in. Well, and Hookie's it. your coach, man. if Hookie's <laughs> your coach, you better be ready. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's true. It's true. I mean, it's it's obviously we, we it's it's a bit different nowadays in, in the way you talk to kids and, and what you say and stuff like that. But a lot of the, like everything that, that was said to us at the time was like more just like, hey, like you guys have an opportunity. You have so much talent. Go out and get it. And and I think that's that's that stuck with with, with all of us during that time at Fullerton. And, and that's why we were so successful. Yeah. Troy, you uh, seem like you were driven since a little kid. You said your dad was a coach. You, this is what you want to do. You get to the Rockies and you're like, what the hell do you guys know about winning? Kind of like Kirk Gibson with the 88 Dodgers when they're like, doing all these jokes. He's like, well, that's why you guys don't fucking win because you're messing around too much. It's not that you came in cocky saying I know more than you, but it's like, hey, I'm here to do a job and to win. Your first day in the big leagues, when you do see your jersey hanging there, what was that like? It's a special moment. You know, um, shoot, it's a dream come true. You know, it's what you've been working your whole life for. And then that, you know, moment comes. I think you try to, to take it in real life where you're at. But once again, once a game start, uh, it's all about competing. Um, otherwise, if you don't go out there and compete, you got no chance. So it don't matter if I was playing against maybe my idol or someone that, you know, I used to watch so much on TV. But, man, hey, he's on the same field as me. And I, I I did a good job of separating those two and realizing okay, I got to compete and find a way to beat them. What, what, what it totally, that's exactly what we told Alan Trejo, right? Last time he was on the yeah. podcast, he just got called up yeah. by the Rockies, Tulo, and he's a young kid from, from this area, from the LA area too. And, and he said, he's like, yeah, man, the, you know, I, I see these guys and it's kind of like, oh my God, I'm facing Kenley Jansen. And I was like, dude, the quicker you get over that, the better you're going to be, you know, just because you see these guys on TV or you watch them on TV, you have to get over Like you have to realize like, Hey, I'm on the same field as them. It's 
I want to kick your ass. That's the mentality you have to take, and that's exactly what what Tulo is hitting on right there. If you want to stay, <laughs> that's the mentality. Yeah, yeah. Have. But plenty of guys, you know, that don't have that mentality, and they can never tap into that. And you know, the big leagues is you know, it's those cup of coffee guys, those guys that get out real quick because you know it was more pat myself on the back and oh, I finally made it. I can tell everybody. And then they, they could have maximized potential if they just would have competed. But for some some guys, it does turn off right then and there. Well, I, I know I know the numbers. I know the numbers are, are like low, relatively speaking. But the idea that it's the people say it's easy to get there, hard to stay there. I think that that is the that is the key that that is the it, it is impossible to stay there. Yeah. It's, uh, totally. Who you got coming into your studio, man? You got all right. Hey, say <laughs> What's up, uh, young Tolly? Yeah, this is uh, we're right there, like the Tolly Studio. Yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ! All right, all right. Now, Tulo, do you know Tolly's story right now? You know what he's up to? Like, I'm not sure, he, I want to know. <laughs> okay, so he was in the Yankees organization last year during the bubble, oh, yeah. but but now okay, he's living in upstate New York on a like 200 acre farm. He's a building a, sto- a schoolhouse. He has his own pond. He has no cell phone service. He has to drive into town to go to this like radio station that he's now. Yeah, he's tractor Tolly. You know, that's a bulldozer. No, that's not a tractor, Beto. That's a bulldozer. Like I know. Huh? Like, <laughs> okay. So this dude, like, he's in our group chat to like trying to figure out the show. We text him on Monday. He'll respond like on a Thursday, right? Like this guy is living this crazy different world. Now tell me, when you met Josh Tolly, the catcher, what did you think? <laughs> Man, I, I mean, call, call my head guy so guy. many different. Like I said, this guy is. I wish everybody had the chance to be in the same locker room as Josh Tolley. Like, what the dynamic he brings to a clubhouse is second to none. I mean, you talk about someone that he will give it back to you, but he will wear it as good as anybody. The only other teammate that I had anything like Tolley would be a guy named Ryan Spielborgs who, you know, was the same, just like Tolly. They can give it, they can take it, but, man, you talk about it, – it's hard to come to the field every single day in the big leagues. You're on game, you know, 120, but there you go. You see Tolly, and you're just ready to go. But I remember the bus rides, and, I mean, this guy always wore a suit on the buses, and everybody else would be in the game. And, I mean, he always had this – what do we call it, Tolly, the wine suit? He had that wine suit, that Cabernet suit. <laughs> oh, Yeah. The way that way when his when his wine you know started to spill you couldn't even tell because it it matched his suit. So hey, that's and, what the lady at yeah. Aviv told me. She said, "Hey, get this Cabernet suit so you can never tell when you spill on it." And that, that's a good idea. Yes. And, and I mean, the only time he was going to play was when Ra Dickey was pitching. So he was you know once a week, you know once every five days he played. And other than that, he was just. I, I don't even – he was just like a guy that was hanging out in the clubhouse. <laughs> He's in, in, <laughs> his job in the big leagues, right? He never had any worries. He never had any worries. He could be hit 180, and he was, his job was still going to be there because he was R.A. Dickey's personal catcher. And it was just comical to us because we're sitting there. You know, I'm grinding my ass off every day, playing hurt. You know, just how am I going to get it done today, whatever. And then you got Tolly over there just doing nothing to help the team win. And, you know, his job was more secure than mine. Hey, hey, hey. But tell, hey, you tell these people a couple of things. First off, hey, nobody can catch a knuckleball like me. Nobody. Nobody. Hey, he can catch that hey, knuckle puck better than anybody on and off the field. Hey, hey get, your, uh, get, your, uh, get your pitching coach to find a few more knuckleballers. Give me a few more years of service time. Let's go. Yeah, well, oh, hey, stay in shape because if there's a young knuckleballer coming up, they're going to be finding your number because you're one of the few that can do it. Uh, I'm in shape, believe me. Man, yeah, all this hard work I do, I'm in shape. Yeah, yeah, but nobody's going to be able all to right, get him because right. he, he has no cell phone service. They can't find him. So tell us, if you have a, a knuckleballer, send us a message here on the podcast. We'll get it to Tolly a couple weeks later. But, but ready to go. You, Tula, you say that about Tolly, but at the same time, those are the characters. Those are the, the, the guys that make a clubhouse, right? Like, you need that where Tolly understands his role. He's going to catch R.A. Dickey every five days, and he's going to hate life because it's going to be terrible trying to catch a knuckleballer. But 
there's a reason guys like you and Ricky and Tolly make it to the big leagues because you understand who you are, not trying to put up a show like some pitchers or hitters now where they're, they hit a bomb or they strike somebody out and it's all about, let me prepare my, my celebration instead of actually doing the work. I wouldn't be on this. I wouldn't be on this podcast right now. You know, I don't do too many things. I promise you. I don't got Twitter. I don't got Instagram. I don't do podcasts, but these are two of the realest that I've ever came across. That's why I'm on this <laughs> podcast right now because these guys are real. They're going to give you real information. They're going to tell you exactly how it is. And that's why I always respected them. There's no, there's no fluff in either one of them. They've always been like that. That's their strength. And I think they understand that. Hey, I'm, I'm going to say something too. You, you made the comment about like, like I, I do like the bus chops in the clubhouse, but one thing I'll never forget is one, one time one of the guys was, was struggling a little bit and you said, Hey, you might have to be the punching bag today. And you did, and you teed the conversation up on the bus, and by God, I was the punching bag in traffic on the 434 going out to, up to the airport. And I was like, holy shit, that was the longest hour of my life, and I'm just getting four out by this guy that's struggling. Yeah, sometimes you got to wear it. You know, that's part it's of not it. for everybody, yeah. but sometimes you got to wear it. It's not but, for uh, everybody. Yeah. Right. And. And I think the the feeling is mutual for for I speak for Josh and I, you know, with, with Tulo, and we respect them on and off the field. But like he brought a different dynamic, obviously, to a team. Tulo, quick question: How how tough was it for you to walk away from the professional game? Ooh. Man, still gives me nightmares. You yeah, know, they're... sometimes I'll take ground balls with our guys or hit, and and trust me, there's something that goes on behind there saying one one of my players actually wants me to come back. He actually says, hey, you could do it, you know, uh, you know, basically challenging me. Get, get in there and get to work and make a comeback. And, you know, I want to in the worst way, but at the same time, I know my body's not where it needs to be. And that I enjoy my job so much right now, you know, just come to the field every day, being in the cage, um, hitting these guys fungo, talking the game of baseball. That's me. So I still feel like I have it a little bit um, through them. You know, when they take their ABs, I feel like I'm right in there with them. So. That's my playing now, um, but that was one of the toughest days, I promise you. Uh, I, you know, my story about that, Ricky, I hadn't told too many people this. This is when I knew it was time. So I was with the Yankees, right, and I'm uh, coming off a uh, calf strain. So I'm standing there for the national anthem. We're the home team. I'm playing a rehab game with Tampa Tarpons. So I jog out to my position, shortstop, and I swear to you, jogging out there to take my position – I restrained my cat, all right, oh, jogging out to take my position. So I'm out there first. I know I'm in trouble, all right? So the first, the first three outs, I'm like praying, don't hit the ball to me because I can't move right now. But that had been embarrassing to call timeout, come off the field. So I'm like, damn, how am I going to get myself off the field? Hopefully they don't hit me a ball. If they do hit me a ball, I'll just say I didn't see it or something. That's why I didn't go for it. So luckily no balls hit to me. I jog in. I'm hitting second that inning. I'm thinking in my head because I jogged in and it didn't feel too bad. I'm thinking maybe I did it. Maybe I'm just that far in my head. So I get up facing a um, you know, minor league pitcher, but with a good arm. I hit a single, sure enough, when I'm jogging to first base. I know, you know, my, my calf is, once again, you know, tweeted, whatever. So asked for a pinch runner, go out there. Right then and there, I walked straight to the clubhouse, called my dad and tell, told him I was done. But, you know, I tell you guys that story because – it was tough for me, but when you're running out to the national anthem and you strain your calf, then it's probably time to go home. So that's kind of that's kind of my story, and uh, and I'm kind of proud of it too. I felt like you know I, I ran it out there till the end. Yeah, you did that. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, especially somebody with your your kind of career and pedigree, I, I could imagine. I mean, like we joke about it, but for a little slap dick like me when not being able to get a job this year to play, it's like, it, it is hard. Now the game is changing a little bit. So it's like, I, I tried to pass on all the information that everybody, anybody in the game that I've been around has told me to some younger kids, but that, uh, Tulo, that story is, you're exactly right. It, it defines, it, it's like the end piece of it and being able to do it kind of on your own terms for the most part and say, you know what, enough is enough. I think um, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and I and I ask you that question because I know it was tough for me too. 
and and I know what it's like to feel like your body is just not performing to where you're used to seeing it perform when you're when you were at your best when I was at my best and, and I just knew like I, as much as you want to get it going you're like okay it's not hurting it's not hurting oh shit it does hurt it does hurt and it just doesn't feel right and you start it starts playing mind games with you and nothing's for me on the pitching side it was like I'm not I don't have the velo I don't have the movement that I have something's just not right mechanically I feel off and I remember, I, I mean, it took me about a year because even after I went to Mexico and came back, I said, all right, I'll give it one more go. Even though I knew deep, deep inside me, it just didn't feel right. But I was like, I'll give it one more go. I go for a tryout to Arizona, got zero uh, offers. And I was like, OK, this is it. Uh, that's when I, I, I got home. I called I uh, told my wife and I was like, hey, I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for this to be over. Uh, it's not the way I wanted it to end, but at the end, at the end of the day, Tulo, you know, we have a story to tell. And I think, you know, be, coming from where we came from, we came from different backgrounds, but we also came from, you know, similarities of we weren't high, highly recruited. We made a name for ourselves and we got to the big leagues. You obviously experienced a lot of success. I think one of the coolest moments I shared with you was in the All-Star game in 2011. We saw each other in that breakfast um, um hall where, where we had breakfast and i remember you're like dude i'm proud of you you know i'm proud that that, that you finally got over that hump because there was so much uh stuff that was being said because obviously he was he was drafted after me and the blue just could have taken him but i remember he was like dude i'm proud of you and 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 keep it up and and and, and it was it was just a cool moment because it was, again it was two young kids that have met or then knew of each other their freshman year and then you know we we kind of saw each other grow up in the big leagues and and Unfortunate that for both of us, injuries play a, a big role in, in in us retiring early. <clears throat> Too low. Yeah, it happens. You know, I think I'm fine with it. it I understand it. It happens, and I think you know it, it goes to. I think it's those times where we where we take the field or you take the mound, and you know we we pitch through pain or you pitch through pain, and I played through pain, and I think at times that probably worked against us, but at the same yeah. time, that's who we are. That's our mentality. And we, we, we put it out there every day for our teammates, you know, uh, yeah. trying to be available for them. And I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's nothing, you know, to be ashamed of, man. You gave it everything you got. I know I did. And it makes it easier when you look back at it and say, man, I, I went through a lot, but I did not give in. And, and I don't it's, think for one second, you know, we gave in. It, it's funny he, he says that, you know, you played through pain, through pain because a lot of people ask me, they're like, why, why were you pitching in 2012 if you were in pain? I was like, because I had to be there for my teammates. Half my sack yeah. was gone. You know, three, four guys were hurt. I wasn't going to be the guy to give in. Like, I wanted to go out there. I wanted to compete. And, yeah, it went. It kept going shittier and shittier every time out. But I was like, I, I, was, I was born this way. Like, I'm not, like, not going to give up. Like, I got to keep going. I'm going to keep throwing punches. Even if I'm knocked down, I'm going to get up and keep throwing punches again. It worked against me, you know, but but at the end of the day, like like Tulo says, you have nothing you hang hang your head on. You know, you, you we made it to big leagues, you know, at the end of the day and, 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 we, played, we, and played a long time and played yeah. a long time. Don't forget that. Right. Like when I when I say that, it's like the idea that, yeah, you're right. You didn't uh, get the, the farewell ceremonies, which either one of you guys would have ever wanted. But it's like, yeah, you you played so hard, hit so hard ran your bodies into the ground at some point they are going to break down over i mean you play enough 162s your body's going to shut down on you so um i mean freaking great careers it's just it, it's it's amazing saying that i was teammates uh with both of you guys because it is not many guys can say they did what you did for that long and that's what uh you know, as a reporter, you hear athletes say, like, you know, you just want to leave it all out on the field. A lot of guys, it's just eyewash when they're saying that, right? It's like, like yeah, blah, blah, blah. But with you guys, you really did feel that, live that every single day. But Tulo, your dad was a coach. You're a father now. Ricky's a father. Tolly's a dad. And you guys have the kids playing there. What was that conversation like with your dad when you left the dugout and you called him immediately? Um tough to take but i think he had enough watching you know i think it came from him watching me um wanting to do well based on you know hits and me making good defensive plays and our team winning games too you know i think he started watching the game how i felt out there don't get hurt hopefully he's okay anytime i started to you know you know give a funny look on my face and i felt that from him after the game like hey did you come out of that one okay so therefore, I knew I was not only wearing on me, but wearing on my family. 
And I never wanted to be that big leaguer that held on too long. Uh, I think there's too much pride and too much, um, you know, I liked being good too much to sit there and keep going and being, you know, average to below average. So I knew my time had came, but that, t- that conversation with my dad was definitely tough. But I'll tell you what, when he comes to the games here at the University of Texas, I see that joy back on his face versus, you know, him biting his fingernails, you know, having a few drinks to take off that edge, sitting there hoping, you know, I don't get hurt. So I, I realize that, and that tells me, you know, I'm doing what I should be doing because of he's got that look back on his face. With his cutoff and, and, shirt on. No, oh, no sleeves, that's for sure. No sleeves. sleeves. No. You, hey, your dad's a no sleeves guy? No, no sleeves. sleeves and no a sleeves. Coors Light in his hand every time I've ever met the guy. Oh, what a conversation. <laughs> you think this is fun? You guys think this is great having Tulo? We need to have his dad on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, oh, you won't stop laughing. Wait, so no sleeves, like gun show all the time? No. All the time. All the time. <gasps> Love that. No matter what, yeah. I He's either letting that. letting Fullerton fans know that you know Long Beach is <laughs> about to give it to them, or the opposing team, whether it be the Dodgers, the Giants. So he don't he don't he don't back down, and and now it's the opposing team that we've been in college. So that's fun. I love it. Well, t- hey, tell Mike said hi too. That's fantastic. We'll do. We'll do. Tulo, in baseball, like I told you, this podcast we don't care about baseball. What's going on? And like you're in fourth place here, or there. The characters you meet. No, that's there not his is. dad. Oh, hold on. Let me get a solo on you, Rick. Let me get a solo. Oh, Those my are tank God. Top. Those are tank top days. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a beauty right there. The, that fires me up. Oh, see, t- uh, next week, Tolly, uh, when, when Tim Raines comes on the podcast, no sleeves for you, Tolly, all right? No sleeves, bro. You got to come out. Yeah, um, the yeah, car- Rock Raines coming on, huh? That's what yeah, Rick is saying. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to give him a shout. Um, Billy oh, Warlow right. actually set it up, so. We're uh, hoping good dude, that, right yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I, I knew, I knew, I knew once, once you know the the Yankee stuff when 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 it, you announced your retirement, I knew when you came out of a game or it was like kind of like it just happens so quick. Like I, I knew it has to be bad for this guy to be dragged off the field like that, you know, or for him to announce his retirement. I know it's it's not good, and but um, but yeah, man. I mean, shoot, you have a lot to be proud of. I mean, everything. Hell yeah, you, just just. To- I mean, just to get to college and play, I'm still impressed. All right, now that one loss in high school, what happened there? You went 15 and one. Who messed it up for you? Yeah, he's <laughs> Yeah, Live Oak, Live Oak gave up a whole bunch of doubles to right center. I don't know, a lot of bad pitches. I'll throw my Ricky. Uh, I just gave it. bad day, bad day. Didn't make, didn't make my pitches. Didn't execute and. Uh, Man, that one that one hurts too. So See, the reason yeah, I asked that is the reason I asked that is because being around, now getting to know you a little bit on the podcast, you might not know where you were at yesterday, but you're gonna know that one game that got away from you or that one guy that slighted you. Like that's why you're wired. I well, love that. I don't even know who I beat those sixteen times, but I know exactly who I pitched against for that one loss. Trust me. So. <laughs> Dude, uh, there's another, there's another funny story about me and him when we faced each other in the big leagues. It was in Colorado. It was. Uh, during Ubaldo Jimenez's like big run, remember when he was like Mister Everything yeah. halfway through the, through the series through the season, and I remember uh, I struck you out the first at bat, and as he's taking out, it was the end of the inning, and he's taking off his helmet and his batting gloves, and he's yelling, dude, like loud. He's like, "Hey, next at bat, throw that shit again, throw it again," and I'm like sitting there, like, "Yeah, okay, I'm gonna throw it to you again." <laughs> <laughs> Him. Him and it was just because we had a that that Long Beach Fullerton uh, connection. Him and Evan Longoria, dude. Every time. I mean, I only faced Tulo once uh, during the, that series. Or yeah, in in 2010, that was the only time we ever faced each other. But Longo in, at uh, at uh, Tampa Bay, like it was like every time. It was like I was listening to Tulo every time. Like I'm gonna take your ass deep. He texted me right before the game. I'm gonna take your ass deep tonight. You know, <laughs> <laughs> throw it again. Throw it again. Throw it again. Next time, bad. Throw it again. I'll see you again. And I was like, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> but yeah, man, those are the cool totally the only the, only, the other uh, the guy we play with like that would be Donaldson, right? Yeah. I mean, Donaldson yeah. was in your face, saying whatever he wanted to the pitchers and the ultra competitors. So I mean, it was yeah. cool for me to get a chance. You know, as much as Donaldson, you know, I hope he listens to this because he gave me a headache. 
Like every day playing with that guy is difficult. It'll give you a headache, but I'll tell you what, he brings it to the field every single day and you want him on your team. And, uh, you know, it was fun for me to play with him and take the field with him because I, you know, I always thought, man, that guy, that guy has an, has the ass every time he takes the field, you know, just, just like I, I, I do. And, um, that, that, that was fun to, to be on the field with a competitor like that. Yeah, hey, and Big Daddy capitalized too. If he said throw that shit again and you did, it was in the seats. I can tell you that much. <laughs> well, Big, Big Daddy was going to let you know too. Oh, he was going to let you know. Hey, Julo, hey, do you remember when I led the team in home runs for a while? Yeah, about, about three innings. Yeah, about three innings on that Blue Jays team. Oh, Bautista, Encarnacion, Donaldson, Tolly at the top yeah. of the leaderboard in the home run column. <laughs> okay. And I let everybody know too. All, yeah, all right, you know. okay. That that's our promo for next week. Tolly led the Blue Jays in home runs, and Tulowitzki confirmed it. All right, all right, cool. Because <laughs> okay. that part yeah, he, he, he had one. Everybody else had zero. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and I, hey, hell, I don't know if I got a hit after that. It don't matter. It that don't news, matter. That newspaper you swung was loud that day. <laughs> Hey, but he, well, I, had, he, I, I, I had a wet noodle, huh? That thing was brutal. Oh, that was special. I mean, I could square a ball up and it would just go on out there. It was uh, – that's all right, though. Whatever. I mean, boy, I had fun well, doing it. Did you think it. I was going to come on this podcast and actually, like, talk you up and be nice to you today? Or were you <laughs> – no. like, when I came on, were you like, damn, this is going to be a long day for no. me? No, I knew I knew I was gonna be the fun team guy, but I was fired up when Ricky said, "Yeah, hey, Tulo's coming on." I was like, "Hell yeah!" I didn't think because, right. as you said, you're not into this stuff. You know, you're not you, yeah. you you're you're at Texas. You kind of do your thing. You're not hell. Nobody nobody's you don't you don't make an appearance anywhere. So I was, uh, dude, I was yeah. stoked you know, because I knew we were gonna have a fucking blast today. Yeah. This was um, <laughs> I, I'm really good at finding information about people, past interviews. Too low. There's nothing out there on you, man. Like I honestly had nothing prepared today. I just knew the little bit that Ricky and Tolly told me about you. Cesar Ramos told me about you, and a lot of respect from uh, watching you from a distance. Because, like I said, you uh, played for the Rockies, so I would see you when you got in L.A. And I'm like, I remember one of the first times I went in the clubhouse for the Rockies, and I think it was Ubaldo was doing right, and you gave the most boring, bland answers. I'm like, he's that guy, <laughs> and I'm like, which is good because. He's that guy, so you know what you're going to get out of him. He's a leader. He spoke, but damn, he's a terrible quote. He's, though, like some of these other guys who are like, oh, look at me. I'm the guy on the 25th man on the team, but I give amazing quotes. Um, but that's an, anyway. I was probably I was probably doing that interview saying something, saying get the fuck out of my face. Oh, no, you looked at us. Out. And then the Rockies, there's only – but it was like – it was like two people that traveled for the Rockies, right? It was the TV crew and then Thomas Harding. And then it's like, okay, let me, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. Like, let's hey, go. But, but you're, 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 you're no, one wanted, I, no, no one wanted, really to, talk wanted to talk to me. I knew what I was doing. Like you said, I, I made it boring on purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marshawn Lynch did that, it. Man. That's why I told you, I told you when he came on, I was like, watch out, like Tulo, we have to crack that, that shell a little bit. He, he's, he ah. won't say much. I'm glad he kind of. You know, let him. Oh, Tolly's the right guy. Tolly can get me going. Not too many can. Tolly knows how to press my buttons. <laughs> oh, I love it. Just That's not that action, Bob. That's it. That's it. Oh man, uh, Tulo, I know you got stuff to do. Ricky, Tolly, any final word for your buddy? Dude, Tulo, thanks again. I it's freaking awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, man. Any time for you guys. Tulo, yeah. good, good seeing you, bro. I'm glad. I'm glad you're doing well, man. And. And uh, keep up the good work at UT, and hopefully we see you on the West Coast side one day, coaching out here or something. That'd be dope. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. Again, that, uh, thanks for coming out. I know, I know, I know. Uh, it takes a little bit out of out of your day, but we, we really appreciate it, and we really enjoyed it talking shop. I told you it would be easy. Um, like I said, we had a good target in Josh Tolley, so that was great. Yeah, yeah. that helped out. And we'll, and we'll well, do it. I appreciate it. you guys having me. Good yeah, luck. No. Good luck on this. This podcast is awesome. Like I said, I listened to it myself. And uh, great guests, great uh, information for kids out there, anybody who's interested not only in baseball, but, you know, just hearing real behind-the-scenes stories. So nice right, job right, with this thing, too. Thank you. Right right before we let you go, what would Tulo tell 
18 year old Tulo? What's the best advice he would give 18 18 year old Tulo, young Tulo who who was barely coming up, um, didn't have much going uh, out of high school scholarship wise? What would you tell young Tulo? A lot of people will tell you things. Um, you know, don't listen to those naysayers. Uh, keep your head down. That work ethic. Um, you know, all those little things that people tell you, they're important. Um, so outwork people. I think that's always what I've stood for, always what made me, made you, totally, whoever it is. I mean, you know, you got to put your head down and work. There's a lot of people who say they work hard, uh, but when you meet someone that actually work works hard, you, you'll know either you're, you're behind the eight ball or, you know, you match up with the best of the best. So hold yourself to that high standard and, um, you know, you have success. Don't have to be in baseball, be anything. You're, you're going to have to work for it. So all about work ethic, man. That's awesome. Very well said. Love it. <clears throat> Troy Tulowitzki, appreciate you. We're going to have you back on in a couple months uh, just to give you an update on what Tolly's doing on the farm, um, whatever he's doing. <laughs> I, I know you'll love it. And, you know, you're busy. Baseball season grinds you down as an assistant coach at University of Texas, Austin, all that stuff. Sometimes you just need an hour to come out here and just shoot the shit with former teammates and uh, let it go, man, w- without being asked. So uh, what happened today on that 3-0 pitch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have to answer those questions anymore, so that's that's nice. But anytime you guys need me, let me know. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. You, uh, Tony, good luck good on luck. the farm. Ricky, uh, good luck with Baby Soleil. We'll talk to you guys next week. And it, it, it's scheduled to be Tim Raines next week on the Let's Go Ricky Roll podcast. Thank you. See you guys. Bye.